So, Martin, thank you for the invitation to come and see LB Enclosures. Now, this is a very, very competitive market. There are lots of offerings out there. What do you feel sets LB Enclosures apart from them? I think here at LB Enclosures, we're really looking to be partners with our customer. That's what we're looking for. We want to be a solution provider. Of course, you can buy metal boxes from us, but really where we come into our own is when you've got a bit of a problem or something's not quite going according to plan, we can sort of jump in and, and help out with that and be that design side of it as well. A little bit of a troubleshooter. That's, I think that's what makes us a bit different. Okay. Now, I've known you as Lincoln Bins. Um, and as Lincoln Bins, you, you started out as a one-man op operation. Now, obviously, that's grown, and today we can see a, a significant uh, company organisation here. What is it about your approach to the market? How have you developed things for LB Enclosures to move forward? I think, as you mentioned, when, when we start, started out as a one-man band um, as Lincoln Bins, they, we were, it was a diff, the time was different, as you said. It was very different. People were just looking for a box to put electronics into. Um, now it feels like people want a, more of a one-stop shop to be able to come to. They want to be able to buy the box and take care of the design and the branding and take care of some of the, the subcontract work that's done to it at the same time. So I think moving from Lincoln Bins, which we obviously still are, moving towards LB Enclosures, really trying to home in on, on what it is that we do to be a bit clearer for, for, for a new generation. So are you basically really giving somebody an engineering arm that they might not necessarily have? 100%. So we have here a full-time design engineer. So you can bring your parts to him in a box, put them out on his desk, and by the end of the day, he'll have a product for you. Everything all designed up, all in in CAD that you can render from, and then we can then take it the next step and actually manufacture it here from our base in West Sussex. So this is much more than, uh, obviously you are selling boxes, but this is much more than just shifting boxes. Then. 100%, so th there are still people who just buy metal boxes, and of course they can do their own manufacturing, and we have no problem with that. You, you can do that online or you can do that with us. But when it's, you've got, say you've got smart people now who are designing software, they're working on circuit boards. That's their area of expertise. Our area of expertise is the electromechanical, the manufacturing side of it. The how do we make that fit in there? Because it doesn't look quite simple. Do we need a little bracket? Do we need to stack something up inside of here? Does this need a heat sink that's got no space to fit externally so we've got to fit it internally? It's those sort of little problems that having engineers on site all the time gives you that advantage with the customer if they don't have that in their organisation. Okay, so would there be a, a high charge for that engineering capability? I mean, is this an expensive thing to I, come get from you? I don't think it is, not, not, okay. in, in, not in, the, in the modern time. We, we're £100 an hour for our design service. Now, we, we, what we're trying to do is, we're not trying to be a design house, that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to take your product and work with our expertise on top of that. So for a hundred pound of learnt experience, because everyone here has worked in manufacturing and engineering, that's what you're buying. So I think it's a pretty reasonable charge um, to be able to get to the to a final product. Yeah, and obviously there's the other side to it is that you could be ironing out tens of thousands of pounds of problems down the line as a result. Now I understand you're a design partner of Raspberry Pi. Absolutely. Um, this is sort of really my sales manager, Alan's area of expertise. This is where he really sits and he lives and breathes Raspberry Pi. So I think maybe he's probably better placed to explain that rather than me. Okay, no problem. Let's talk to him. So, Alan, we understand that you're a partner with Raspberry Pi. How has that come about? What is it that you've done for them? Okay, so when we first came across Raspberry Pi as a board, they were already at iteration number three and customers were coming to us asking us to house the, the actual board itself. And our first development was this, which fits into the Unio box. But it's very hard work for us in terms of milling and it's quite time consuming and it turned out to be an expensive solution. So in-house we've developed our own board and it plugs into the side of the pie and takes the connectors round to the front of the box. And then that way we can house it into a standard E-case, which is more industrial 
and that gave us an option to surface mount, visa mount, din rail mount, and then ultimately we put them into 19 inch rack as well. And at that point we came under the radar of Raspberry Pi and they invited us to come along to become a design partner with them. Excellent. So really that's much more than just selling them something off the shelf. I mean, you've engineered a solution for them. We've engineered a solution. Um, Raspberry Pi themselves don't buy the solution from us. They just recommend us to their customers that want industrial and we also get recommended to their other partners to yeah. work with. That's a really good achievement. The process that you've described there is something I think I'd really like to look into. So let's call Martin back and get him to explain exactly what you do. Okay. So Alan's explained the process by which Raspberry Pi has been developed. Um, I'm looking at this that we've got on the table here. Can you take us through what's actually involved in this? Absolutely. So when we think about a case like this, the, the part that is sometimes is the hardest part for people to get a concept around is the two of these are actually the same. They're the same extrusion, they're the same profile. They just have different work done to them, which is the part that sometimes customers don't quite understand is possible and there are endless options that are available. Okay, well this obviously opens a Pandora's box of opportunities uh, on this. Can we see some of those in action? Absolutely, do you wanna come and walk around the factory? Thank you. So I see a lot of materials here, Martin. Um, where do we start? So everything starts here with extrusion. Okay. So the advantage of being a UK manufacturer is we manufacture in the UK. So all of the products that are available on our website are extrusions we actually hold in stock. So it gives us the ability to be able to cut custom extrusion here from the shelf, from stock material. So we have stock holding, but we also have an ability to cut custom. Okay, can we see the cutting process? Absolutely. So what's going on at the moment is we've gone through the initial steps. We're now into cutting stage. You've told me what length you want. The saw has now been set up. It will be checked. First off, it'll be checked, it'll be measured, and now that saw will run out all of the parts until all of the parts are completed for the number that you need in your order. Okay, so if I've rung you with an obscure size um, that is just something bespoke that I need, you're saying that you can basically react to that? Absolutely. If you ring me in the morning and it's a sensible amount, I will try my very best to get it out that day, if not the day after. What are we seeing now? Well, every enclosure needs an end plate. So now what we're looking at is custom end plates. So we've been through the cutting stage, now we're on to where are we going to put the connectors? Where are we going to put the things that need to see the outside world? So what you're looking at here is we're taking stock sheet and turning it into an end plate. Now, when we're talking like we were earlier about the speed, you ring me up in the morning, I can get something out to you in the afternoon. The same is with this. We have an option for rapid prototyping that uses no other processes. So what you're looking at now is the plates being made, the connector holes are being put in. If it needs to go out for another process, say it needs to change color, needs to be anodized, needs to be painted, that can happen. But we're assuming this is gonna be a, let's say a, a prototype a one-off so we can look at the first stage of the design. So now we've the process is completed, you're now looking at the end plate. So this has now come directly off the machine, it will go off for deburring and we can come straight into a finished product straight on the box. We've got a little bit of deburring to do, we can push the print straight onto that, ready to put your connectors Okay, into. so you've produced this in a matter of a few minutes yes. for us. So again, going back to me contacting you and asking for something completely bespoke so that I can physically show somebody yes. a prototype, Yes. then you can respond. Absolutely, that's what we specialise in. So Martin, what's going on here in the branding? It looks pretty impressive. What is taking place? Okay, so what you're looking at at the moment is a laser, laser etching process. Branding is really important because it's your opportunity to put your company name on there, your company brand out there. It needs to be on all the products that you're making. Also has the ability to name up connectors. So say you have an input and an output, we want that on there as well so the people who are assembling it know where to plug the plugs into. So what we're looking at here is the laser etch. It's actually etching into the anodizing. It comes out white, it's not actually doing white, it's lasering off just a very small part of the anodizing to, to show what's going on. 
So there's some real advantages to lasering. One of them is the durability of the part. You actually can't scratch it off. So if I show you now the part, so this is the part we just produced. If you want to try and scratch that off, yeah, no you're chance. Gonna, you're going to have a proper go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no chance at all. So this is great for harsh environments. If it's going to be in a high use area, this is never going to come off. You would actually have to physically remove the anodizing for this to come off. So it has a great advantage in harsh environments. So Martin, we've seen uh, the laser work. What are we now looking at? So now we're looking at digital full color printing. So if the environment is a bit less, less harsh and it doesn't need to be that aggressive, we can now have another option, a, a print option. So when we're talking about branding, now we can go with full color. So this is all done at the same time. So it's not like old fashioned screen printing processes where you have to pull one color at a time. This is doing it all in one go. So send over high res artwork, we'll put it straight onto the panel straight out of the machine. Again, you could have all of your connectors named up a different color if you wanted to. Input one red, input two blue. It gives so much flexibility. And also it gives the ability, if you need to make changes in the future, you're changing a digital file, you're not changing a screen. Right, understood. This gives real uh, insight because obviously more and more the enclosures that we use are actually graphically quite important in the overall products. So finally, what do we look at next? So the, the last part of the process now is anything that goes with our enclosure. Does it need holes? Does it need vent patterns? Is it gonna have another part that needs something connected to it? So this is where the on-site on CNC machining, the milling really comes into its own because it doesn't have to go anywhere else. The enclosure can get machined right here on site. So what you're looking at at the moment is the probes coming down and it's mapping out the surface of the extrusion. So the reason we do this is we've got count sinks on this part and as you know yourself, extrusion's not always flat. Yeah. So what this is doing is this is making a, a surface that's gonna be sent into the machine to make sure those counter sinks are all the correct depth. So when you put the screw in, every single one of them's flush, not too high, not too deep. So once it's finished that, it's gonna start machining the holes. So punching's great that we looked at earlier for speed but sometimes there's some holes that you can't punch in especially in extrusion you can't, really can't put extrusion into the punch so now it's going to machine it out on our CNC mill this gives us the flexibility of hole sizes gives us the flexibility of shapes there is no shape really that you can't machine for different connectors for different industries again this is all about time to market that we're looking at okay. here this is reducing the time that we have to go elsewhere to do it. This is all done on site. Everything you've seen here today is done here from our base in West, West Sussex. It is really about getting the product into the customer's hands quickly. We are very, very passionate about UK manufacturing here at LB Enclosures. It's something we hold really close to our hearts. It's what we've been doing, it's what we're promoting, it's what we're trying to push. And really it ends with the customer having UK manufactured parts in their hand. Okay, all right, can we actually take a look at what's just been Absolutely. machined on there? Of course. Okay, so now you can see we've got a couple of countersinks and, and one blank one because there's not a screw going in this, believe it or not. So you've actually got the correct depth all the way along this panel, every single one, because we spent time mapping the surface. If you rung me up and sent me something over that we couldn't manufacture, one of my team's gonna tell you that. They're not gonna waste your time and money to, to make some, try and make something that you can't make. They're actually gonna give you advice okay. on, you need to move that hole over a little bit because it's gonna break in here. This is not quite the right size for that connector if you look at the data sheet. This is the added on service that we're trying to bring. We're a manufacturing company full of engineers and we wanna help because we know time to market is key. Martin, that was really good because that was engineering done properly. That's real engineering. So much more um, than just, uh, for want, want of a better phrase, box shifting, um, uh, commodity selling. You really are providing people with engineering solutions. And you've been doing this for 40 years. So 40 years of expertise is basically what I've had the privilege of seeing today um, on there. So I, I have to say, it was very impressive. Now, people watching this video, they want to tap into that 40 years of experience. Where do they go? Where do they start? Okay, I'm a little bit old school. I like a phone call. <laughs> I think pick up the phone, 
let's have a conversation, tell me a little bit about what you're hoping to achieve, and then we can start to see, can we help? Is it something that we can help with? Because actually that is completely free. We don't, there's no charge for that. You can have a conversation with myself or one of my team, and we can say, I think we can help. This is something we can, we can get involved in. And then we can move, move on to the next steps from there. If, if you need to find drawings, a little bit more information about the products, you can go to www.linkandbins.com. And if you want to, um, you can send us an email at info at linkandbins.com. But I really would encourage picking up the phone and having a conversation. Because as you said, there is 40 years worth of knowledge here that is available and we'd love to share it because we're passionate about engineering. Okay, brilliant. Well, look, today has been excellent. There's a lot that I've taken away from it and there's clearly an awful lot for people to benefit from. So thank you. Thank you.